Well, good morning once again. Uh, good morning to those of you on Facebook as well, whether you uh, typically attend with us on Sunday morning uh, at home or you're just scrolling past. We're glad to have you. Certainly glad to see all of my church family and all of our special Amen. guests uh, that are here today. I hope it is well with your soul. Amen. Uh, I hope that you can praise the Lord um, for what he's done in your life. Uh, first in salvation and second through how he and, and only God could use such a crack vessel as we are. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. And I was sitting there thinking through that whole song. Uh, it would take the blood of Jesus to cover my sins because certainly uh, no other blood could be claimed that powerful. Um, and so this morning, let's go to him in prayer before we begin. Uh, and let's uh, see if we can once again prepare to worship. God, again, our hearts are tender. God, we want them to be tender so you can speak to us. And God, that we, uh, whether it's emotion or God, whether it's uh, mind or whether it's just our hearts today uh, that you affect. God, we pray that you would affect change in us. Start with me. Uh, as we should all say, Father, start with me and change me uh, before we can go out and change anybody else. God, we thank you uh, that you still choose to use us. Uh, God, you don't need us, uh, but you choose to have a relationship with us if we choose to have one back with you. And God, we're thankful that you continue to use us in spite of our sin. And God, we just want to bring you honor and glory. We know, God, so many times we don't. Uh, with our actions and what we say, um, God, change us. Uh, change us to be more like your son, Jesus. Help us today to learn that, for it's in Jesus' name I pray, and, and amen. Well, have you ever taken a test? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a time or two, haven't you? Uh, there's all kinds of tests, aren't there? Uh, you might be saying, well, Brother Andy, life is, uh, you, what do you mean? Life is full of tests, right? Uh, and so true. Uh, we have tests in school. I know that uh, this week, coming week is K-Prep testing for uh, the middle school and the high school. Uh, I know our elementary schools have probably tested this past week. Uh, and so those are important tests, right? Tests tell us uh, a lot of things. And so there are, are tests for school-age children. But, but what about adults? Uh, are there some tests for us? Well, I, I think that uh, in life as adults, we have tests too, don't we? Uh, can we uh, keep the laundry done? Uh, can we cook dinner? Can we clean house? Can we get the kids where they need to be? Can I be a good wife? Can I be a good mother? Can I be a good church member? Can I be a good employee? Uh, maybe for our women, maybe for our men, you say, well, uh, can we uh, mow the yard? Can I fix the dryer? Can I keep the oil changed? Can I get the kids where they need to be? Can I be a good husband, a good father, a good church member, a good employee? And again, uh, that's just... Me and Lori uh, dealing with life this week, basically, is, is what those lists were right there. But they're all tests, aren't they? Uh, maybe, not, maybe, maybe not for all of us, but certainly for some of us in different times in our lives. And, and we just all have tests no matter what age we are, uh, no matter what the situation is in our life. Uh, we all have things come up that we test over, right? Uh, and so what do tests do? Well... I think uh, for a lot of people would say they put us under pressure, don't they? Uh, they, they put us under pressure because uh, we have to uh, perform. Uh, we have to show what we know. Uh, we have to uh, take care of things in life that need to be taken care of. And, uh, and, and they put us under pressure, and that pressure shows truly what our character is. Yeah. Have you ever heard the expression, this was something that I used to use all the time as a football coach. I used to say, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. I mean, that's actually a quote from a novelist named James Lane Allen. I know a lot of sports coaches and things take that quote. But let, me, let me give it to you again. Adversity does not build character, it reveals it. A lot of people think that when you get under pressure, well, that builds character. And, and that, that, you know, that's where you get your character from. Well, that's not the case at all. When something is put to the test, um, it reveals what kind of character that you have. Right. It basically shows uh, what is um, on the inside. And so uh, we uh, know this and, and we've seen this. Uh, I don't know if you all uh, remember or not, but I, I like to mess with uh, labs. I like the <laughs> Labrador Retrievers. I like to train Labrador Retrievers the best I can. I, I've got some good help because I don't know much. Uh, my friends Bo and Chris, they... 
uh, they help me with that and, and try to teach me some things, and I try to learn. Well, this past Friday uh, was the first field trial that I had ever put uh, my youngest dog in. I mean, so this field trial is basically where you have, uh, and this was called the Derby, and it was for, just like the Kentucky Derby, it's for uh, horses that are under two years old. Well, this is for dogs that were under two years old. And so very young dogs. And so uh, what they do is, is people enter uh, this, this test, this trial. Uh, and what they do is they put dogs through a test. Uh, and it's amazing to see uh, what dogs can do. It, it's a hard test, and, and you wouldn't think that these dogs could do the things that they do. I mean, they go out 400 yards and find a bird that they don't know where it is, and, and they use their nose, and they use their eyes, and uh, they swim, and they, they it's just amazing to see if, you, if you've never seen it before. And so um, there are four series in, in the test. Uh, actually four different competitions and you make or you make the cut you move on to the next competition and, uh, and so there's a lot of pressure put on the dogs I mean there's you know 40 or 50 people watching you've got judges you've got guns going off you've got birds flying in the air there's just a lot of pressure uh, put on these dogs and so whether it's good or bad the result of what happens uh, with the dog um, it's revealed I mean, it, it's easy to tell. The tests get harder and harder, and it's, it, it reveals uh, the talent that the dog has. It reveals a lot of times even uh, the things about the dog, like the drive and the attitude and um, the marking ability and, and just all of these different things that we train and test these dogs to try to find out what they really have on the inside. And so, good or bad, uh, the test reveals it. it. It brings it out. And so this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking in God's Word to see uh, what should be revealed in us. Uh, if we go through tests, and if truly uh, character is revealed uh, through these trials, uh, that we need to understand what's on the inside of us today. Because eventually, guess what's going to happen? It's coming out. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And let's see if we can't deal with what's in your heart. What's in your heart? Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 43. Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 43. Luke chapter 6. Beginning in verse 43. And if you don't have your Bible, Hannah has it up on the screen there. I know some of you have apps. Some of you have Bibles. Uh, God's Word is God's Word. And we certainly want it proclaimed. And uh, we want to see it and read it. And so let's look at Luke chapter 6 beginning in verse 43. And this is what God's Word says. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And so we see Jesus <coughs> talking here. Uh, he's preaching. Uh, some scholars believe this was actually another portion of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, I don't know if it is. I don't know if it isn't. But I do know that this is Jesus teaching and preaching to the disciples and to the people. And he's talking about what's inside of a man's heart. Uh, and it's not just a man, a man or woman, a boy or a girl. The people that are listening to him, he's, he's talking to them and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to them about what's on the inside of us. Uh, and so today, uh, we're no different than these people that were listening to Jesus. We're still today in 2021 listening to Jesus, are we not? Uh, it's his word speaking and we should be paying attention. Uh, and certainly, uh, God has something for you and for me. Uh, and so it may not be the same thing. What's for me out of this may not be the same thing for you. 
Uh, but certainly God and his Holy Spirit are speaking to us today uh, through the words that Jesus is speaking, if we'll just listen and pay attention. So let's see again uh, what God's word says here uh, about the heart. It says, uh, he's first of all talking to them about a tree. Actually, two trees. He's talking about a, a, a good tree that brings forth good fruit, and he's talking about a bad tree that bringeth forth evil fruit. Uh, and so the people of the day, God, uh, Jesus always spoke to the people in words that they could understand. And they, they could understand, uh, just like we can today, we have trees outside, don't we? Uh, and we have uh, trees that bear fruit. We have trees that uh, have nuts and fruits and, uh, and all kinds of things on them. Uh, sometimes we recognize them, sometimes we don't. But certainly, uh, when they bear fruit, uh, that is a clue to what type of tree they are, right? Uh, we certainly know uh, the difference between a, a, a grapevine uh, and a bunch of uh, sawbriars. Uh, we know the difference in a grapevine that has grapes, big, plump, juicy grapes on it, um, and these sawbriars. If you don't know what those are, just go walking through the woods uh, in the bottoms of West Kentucky, and you'll trip and fall. And when you fall, you'll go, yeah, that's a sawbriar, <laughs> because they're out there. Well, they get me every time. Uh, we know the difference uh, in these things that are good. If, if you see uh, a pear tree, I know I've got a buddy, uh, Jim Christensen. He's got the biggest, uh, best pear tree of any pear tree I've ever eaten off of. I mean, that thing will weigh down so much that you just think every year the limbs are going to break off of it because of the pears uh, that this tree uh, bears on. I mean, I just love them. I love them when they get just after they start to turn soft, but they're still a little firm and and boy, I can pick those off, and he tells me to eat all I can, and I do. And, uh, you know, it's just, I love that pear tree, and I know it's a pear tree. But now, if he hadn't told me it was a pear tree in the winter, I probably would not have known it was a pear tree. But in the summer, after getting close to the end of summer, I know it's a pear tree because those things get all luscious and juicy hanging on those limbs. Uh, and so Jesus is talking to them about these good trees that bear good fruit and the bad tree that bears evil fruit. And he says people are going to know the difference uh, between uh, these, these briars, these brambles. Uh, they don't go try to gather figs uh, from a sawbriar. They don't get fruit from a sawbriar. They go to a grapevine uh, to get those things in, uh, and where they gather grapes. And so we understand this to be talking about us. The people around us, but the person that Jesus is speaking to is you and me. The man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, the boy in the mirror, the girl in the mirror. And he's talking to us about what is inside of you and me. And not only what's inside, but what's inside that will eventually come out. And so we see where he says, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. A good tree is not going to bring forth fruit uh, that's not good, or it's not going to have uh, a bad fruit on it. Uh, and then he goes on to say, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And so, Brother Andy, what has that got to do with me? Well, if you and I call ourselves by the name of Christ, uh, we are to bear fruit. Uh, the Bible says that we are to bear fruit. From what is on the inside, you and I will eventually let, be brought forth to the outside. Uh, we, we have things that, that uh, identify us with Christ. Uh, we have fruit where we are ministering in and through the church, where we are uh, loving on people, where we are showing forth the love that Christ has shown forth to us. And so there's lots of fruit that uh, can come uh, from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and, and we are to be living a lifetime uh, of gaining uh, to be more like Christ and bearing fruit, fruit that's from our lives. People that come to know Christ because uh, we have told them or because we have lived a life before them. And, uh, and the Bible says that uh, we plant seeds every day, don't we? Uh, we should be strewing seeds or, or strewing, I don't know what it's sowing, certainly. Uh, we strew them, but we sow them first. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're to be sowing these seeds and these seeds a lot of times or they come from uh, the life that we live. And it's always from what is on the inside. Uh, because the Bible says, Jesus tells me, he says, for every tree is known by its fruit. Uh, you and I can tell people that we're Christians all day long till we're blue in the face, right? Yep. 
But what is it that really shows that we're Christians? Our actions. It's our actions. It's what comes out of our mouth. It, it's, not, it's not just what we say. It's, it's what we do. Actions speak louder than words, right? Amen. And certainly, what is in our heart will affect the actions of what we do and not just uh, what we say. And so uh, Jesus tells them, a good man, in verse 45, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, uh, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. And so uh, Jesus is talking about our heart being like a treasure chest. Um, in other words, it stores things up, right? Uh, I know that, Lori, I, some of you still know what a hope chest is, right? Uh, I know that uh, my girls, I, I heard one of them say one time, I, I don't have much hope uh, for a husband, so I'm not getting together a hope chest. And I told them, hey, no, don't, you, don't you say that. God is still working. Uh, trust in him. Uh, but we have hope, right? We have hope for the future. And they put these special things in the hope chest, don't they? Uh, they put these special things. I know Lori's got baby books in there. And, and some baby books are really full. And some baby books are not that full. Uh, that's a joke between my girls. But uh, we have uh, locks of hair. You have blankets. And you have things from your grandmother. And things from your mother. And things from the past. And just all of these things that are important to us, right? And I know Lori, she likes it from time to time getting those things out and sharing those with her girls. And so that's kind of what Jesus is talking about here with the treasure of our heart. Our hearts, uh, they store up these things that we put in through our eyes and through our ears, right? They store up these things that we read and that we see on TV and that we hear in music and these things that we talk about on social media and all of that that we put in eventually goes to our heart and then ultimately, you know what it does? It comes out. Yep. It comes out with our actions. It comes out with our words. And Jesus is telling them that uh, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. So in other words, uh, the things that we're putting in ultimately go to our heart. Uh, and if they're good things, you know what's going to happen? They're ultimately going to come out. Now, that's good and fine. We like that, don't we? We like it when those good things come out. That's what Jesus wants for us as people that are called by his name. But then what happens when we don't put in the good things? When we put in the things on social media that we shouldn't be seeing, that we shouldn't be saying, those things on the internet, those things on TV, those things that we listen to, those things that we watch, you know, those things ultimately go to our heart too. Mm -hmm. And you know what eventually happens? They come out through our words and through our actions. And so um, whatever we are putting in to our hearts will ultimately overflow to where others can see because it says Jesus the last part of verse 45 he says uh, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaking yeah. so ultimately what's in our hearts is going to come out through our words and through our actions and so just as a tree is known by its fruit we will be known by the fruit that we produce yeah. um, I don't know if you all have seen this or not but there's a new app, an app of these things that you get on your phones, on your computers that do stuff. Um, if you don't know, young people, you'll know certainly a lot more than, about apps than me. Uh, but there's a new app that I think is really neat. Uh, you hold your phone and take a picture of a tree trunk, just like at the base of the tree. And you take a picture of the tree trunk, and then the app tells you what kind of tree it is. Yep. You can take a picture of the leaf. Uh, you can take a cross cut, like if it's been cut, you just see the grain of the wood. You can take a picture of that. And that app will tell you what type of tree that is. And it's amazing because I don't know about you, and, and, and Brother Nick, if he watches this, he, he's going to be saying that, you know, I, he, he's, he's really smart when it comes to wood. He deals with wood every day. Uh, he's, he's a sawyer, and he has his own business, and he cuts. And he can just look at a piece of wood that's been cut and say, well, that's an elm, or that's an oak. Or that's a sycamore. I mean, he just it's amazing how much he knows about it. But me, I would have to have that app because I, I can't see inside the tree. I can't see or tell what kind of tree it is just from looking at the bark on the outside. But when it bears fruit, certainly I can tell what kind of tree it is. I know what an apple looks like, right? Um, I know what a hickory nut looks like. Okay? We, we know those things, don't we? 
And so Jesus is saying that whatever is on the inside is the, it's going to finally overflow and it's going to come to the outside. And so, as Christians, uh, we all sin, right? I mean, we still do. We, we don't want to sin as Christians. Christians were never, ever told in the Bible that once you follow Jesus, you're not going to sin anymore. If somebody's teaching that, it's a lie. It's not what the Bible teaches. But certainly, we should be trying every day to sin less, right? We should be trying to live a life where uh, what we put in is good and uh, and we certainly know that what comes out is what's in our hearts, and, and we want to sin less. And so I, I know we still make mistakes. I know we show our temper. We look at uh, things that we should. We say something we should. Laziness, lying, and, and, and the list goes on about sins that Christians commit every day, right? But the difference between a Christian, a true Christian, and a lost person is what have we done with Jesus? Because if we're truly born again, and that's what Jesus tells Nicodemus, right? You must be born again. Uh, we must be. And Nicodemus says, how can I go into my mother's womb again? And Jesus says, well, you've got to be first physically born. That's what he's talking about when he says of water. And then you've got to be spiritually reborn. Amen. Spirit. Because we're born as sinners because of Adam and Eve's sin. And we have to do something with when, when we hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to be reborn, to be saved, uh, means to accept what Jesus did on the cross and ask him to save us and forgive us of our sins. Amen. And so, from that time, we have a relationship with him, don't we? Uh, and then that's when we can start producing fruit. Now, I'm sure any of you that have planted, planted fruit trees before know uh, that it takes a little while to start producing a lot of fruit, Right? But even a young pear tree or even a young peach tree uh, might have a little bit of fruit on it the first year, right? And you think about that as Christians. As Christians, we grow. We grow bigger and stronger, don't we, in the Lord. We, we by faith, know more what the Bible says. We trust more of what God says he's going to do because we, we test him a lot of times, don't we? We see that he is faithful. We, we see that his word is true and it, it never fails. And so uh, we begin, uh, the more we become like Christ, the more fruit that we produce. And so that means that the things going into our hearts, eventually, if we put in the good, eventually the good is going to come out. And that's what we should all want. Uh, does anybody remember the song we used to sing in Bible school, The Fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, and I'm not going to try to sing the song for you. I realize that uh, it, I just, I'm not a good singer. But we certainly remember the kids loving it, don't we? I guarantee you if we had some kids that had been through Awana for a year or two, they probably still remember The Fruit of the Spirit song, don't they? Uh, and they may not have understood it, but now they know that those are characteristics of Jesus. Yep. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yep. And Jesus is certainly all those things to the nth degree, right? He's certainly all those things and much, much, much more. But you and I should be seeing fruit in our life, and the fruit in our life is what should be coming out from our hearts that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah. Again, we're not perfect, are we? We're, there's nobody perfect. There's only been one perfect man ever lived, and that was Jesus Christ. But certainly we should Amen. be growing as Christians, right? That's More right. mature every day. And, and we see and we know that, that we should be like that. And so just looking good on the outside when people are watching uh, is not us producing good fruit. Do you understand that? Yeah. Just us being, uh, you know, kind of fake when people look at us. I mean, yeah, Brother Andy, he says he's a Christian. And I saw him do some churchy things. Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe he is. Well, that doesn't fool God. The Bible says God looks on our heart, right? And ultimately, you know what's going to happen? That's going to come out. Mm -hmm. You ever heard the expression, what you see is what you get? <laughs> well, what you see with Christians is not always what you get. Um, I remember as coaches, when I was coaching, uh, we would always watch the visiting team get off the bus. 
And this is this is really funny if you've ever been a coach before because uh, we call it the look test. Uh, you know, you see a team getting off the bus and you go, that's a good-looking kid right there. Ooh, that's a good-looking kid right there. Ooh, that is a good-looking kid right there. And, and they some teams pass the look test. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, they, they pass the look test. And so, uh, they, in other words, they look good getting off the bus. But just because they look good getting off the bus doesn't always translate into they're going to play good when they get to the football field. Uh, because there's a lot of things that go into a football player that ultimately – that are on the inside are going to come out when they're put to the test against another team. Yep. Um, and so it certainly helps when somebody looks strong and when somebody's uh, big and uh, they look fast, those types of things. Uh, but that's not all that makes up a football player. When you think about that with a Christian, okay, they may pass the look test, but until a little pressure's put on them and, and ultimately the inside starts to come to the outside, they start bearing fruit, then you'll know what's on the inside, right? And so uh, it's always what's on the inside that makes the difference. And as Christians, we must be concerned with what's on our inside. Uh, now, I know the Bible says, and I know Brother Rex, he, he's taught me this long ago, we're to be fruit inspectors as Christians. We're not to judge. Uh, we're not certainly to point the finger at anybody because we certainly have sins of our own. Uh, but we have to have discernment, don't we? We have to discern when somebody says they're a Bible teacher or that they're a follower of Christ. We have to discern by their fruits whether they're telling us the truth or not. Because certainly they can tell us one thing, but if they do something else, then what's on the inside doesn't match the speech, right? The walk doesn't match the talk. And so uh, we can control, uh, we, we can't control uh, what the fruit of somebody else is. I'm as close as Lori and I are, I am in no control of the fruit that she produces or doesn't produce. You know who I am in control of? Me. What goes into my heart is controlled by me. What I put into my eyes, what I put into my ears, what I allow myself to look at on social media, to say, to look at on the internet, TV, radio, whatever, I'm in charge of that. Yeah. And ultimately, I have to be the one responsible for what goes into my heart. And folks, we're living in a society where we don't take a lot of responsibility for our actions, but I have to be responsible for the actions that come from what I put in my heart. So what helps? Well, Psalm 119.11 gives us something good that helps. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. That sounds like pretty good help, doesn't it? That's right. Um, that, doesn't that talk about what we hide in our heart? In other words, what we put in our hearts is what David was saying right there. Uh, if we put good stuff in, guess what we get out? We get good. We put in bad, guess what we get out? That's right. Bad. That's right. And so here's, here's another old saying for you. And, and boy, I can laugh at this one. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. How about putting a little more scripture in our diets? Certainly not going to hurt us, is it? That's right. Amen. It's certainly not going to hurt us. Number one, we know it's going to help us to sin less, but it's also going to help us think and put in more good things. Because I think the more good we put in, guess what? The more we want. That's right. More good. That's right. Have you ever eaten right and worked out before? I know it doesn't look like I have, but there's been a time in my life where I have done that. And you know, my body fights it when I first get back on a good regimen of diet and exercise. Your body fights it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know what after, happens after a while? My body craves it. Yeah. Um, I can tell when I drink a Coke, it, it weighs me down. I can tell when I miss a day uh, going and walking with hand. I can tell when those things happen because my body doesn't feel as good. Yeah. Folks, spiritualize that. When we miss a day of reading God's word, when we miss a day talking to the Lord, when we miss a church service, and I know we all do those things, but uh, certainly the habit should be we do those things as Christians, Amen. right? Yeah. And if we give ourselves that kind of diet, uh, we get a good outcome. In other words, if we want good to come out, then we better be putting good stuff in, right? right. Amen. And that's what we do. God's word not only will help keep us from sin, but it will also show us and others the intent of of our hearts. Because we know that that fruit is going to come out. 
Hebrews 4.12 says this. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. This is, says a lot of things, but this is what it says in reference to what we're talking about. God's word in our lives helps us discern what's good and bad that we need to put in. And not only that, God's word in our hearts and in our lives help us to discern what we see in everyday life as godly or not godly. Is this going to help me bear more fruit? Do I need to spend more time with this or do I need to spend less time with this? Do I need to cut this out of my life or do I need more of this in my life? And certainly God's word is that and so much more. And so this morning, we have to ask ourselves, what's in our heart? Can you think back over the last week at things you've said and done? This is a, this is a, good, uh, this is a good proof of what's in your heart. How much good and how much fruit have other people seen in your actions and what you've said this week? How much good have people seen from my actions and from my words that I've spoken this week, do, do they represent that Christ is in charge of my life? Does it represent that uh, I have a, a heart that's full of those fruits of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit? You know, Romans 10, 10 says this, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. This scripture, I put this in here to help us close today because we will never be a good tree that produces good fruit if we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. If we are not part of, uh, if, if we're not part of Christ and he's not a part of us, then, I mean, we can try to live a good life, but it's certainly not going to produce good fruit, godly fruit, that fruit that represents Jesus. And so the first thing that has to happen is we need to have a relationship with him. And so, well, Brother Andy, can you tell me? No, I can't tell you. That's between you and the Lord. You, you have to go back to a time where you prayed and where you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to save you. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross? Do you believe that he came back three days later uh, again from the dead? That's what it means to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's where you ask him to save you and forgive you of your sins. No preacher can do that for you. No emotional experience of the altar can do that for you. Now, only you, between you and God, is what that's about. And so, what's in your heart this morning? That needs to be the first check. The second check, after salvation, is that you and I need to understand that we need to be producing fruit. The way we live our lives either lead people to Jesus or they turn people away from Jesus. And that's pretty much the long and the short of it. Either you and I are helping people to a relationship or a better relationship with Jesus, or we're turning them away. You know, the problem is, Christian, if our hearts are not right ourselves, we'll not be able to minister to others effectively will be the latter of the two. We'll, we'll turn people away from Christ with our actions and with our words. Warren Wiersbe says, if we see ourselves as excellent guides but do not realize our blindness, we will only lead people into the ditch. That means you and I have to constantly be listening to the Holy Spirit talk to us about our sin, about what we're putting into our lives and what we're putting into our hearts and confess the sin, and start putting in those good things so people can see the good, so people can be led not into the ditch, but to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ.
We cannot lead others into a life we do not practice. Yeah, that's right. Now that's pretty profound, or that was at least to me. We cannot lead others into a life we do not practice. And so we've got to ask ourselves, is the fruit I'm producing good or bad? If the fruit you produced this past week is bad, check what's going into your heart. Check what's going into my heart. And we'll let God uh, be the judge of all of us. Let's pray together. Lord, once again, I know the failures that I've had for you this week. God, forgive me of those. And Lord, I pray that you would change me. Uh, help me to hear your Holy Spirit speaking to me, not to others, but speaking to me about my sin and how I need to let you change what goes into my heart. And God, I want to have good fruit that comes out. I want people to see you and me. And God, I know that that has to come through what goes in. Lord, I pray that you would change us here at Victory Baptist Church. God, I pray that you would change each and every individual that is here today. God, save someone today if they're here and they don't know you. And God, we pray that you would give them the courage uh, to follow you and uh, know what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. For it's in his name I pray. Amen. Time of invitation is where we stand and answer.